Hello everyone, today we are going to be going through a Monte Carlo simulation for a simple real estate model. You can find this worksheet on my website in the link in the description. Should probably start by telling you what a Monte Carlo simulation is. It's a model that sensitizes all of the variables you are using in your analysis based on the probabilities you specified for each variable. So it'll run thousands of simulations, or whatever you specify, where it'll sensitize all of your major variables based on the randomness you assign to each one, and then it'll give you a range of returns based on all of these simulations. It's a lot like building out downside and upside scenarios for your investments, where you're just giving set values for each variable based on whether it's going to be the good model or bad model. But this is a lot more complicated, and it makes you look smarter. I'm going to show you how to do this using a data table and also by creating a macro. The macro version allows you to view a lot more information about the simulation, so I prefer that, but it also takes more time to complete. So let's get started with the data table method. This is the simulation page I have set up, but we're going to go over to the deal sheet first. And this is just the regular model. I have all of these variables up here, the starting NOI, the growth, the debt interest rate, and the cap rate. And then I link them all to the cells where we're going to be sensitizing these variables. Below you can see we have a very simple model. We have the NOI based on our variables. We have the debt service based on the loan proceeds we specified, as well as the interest rate we assigned up here. Then we have the sale price based on the NOI and the cap rate we put up here. Then the loan payback. And from there, we can find our cash flows, IRR, and equity multiple on the bottom. This is the model that we're going to be sensitizing, so let's go back to the simulation page and show you how we can randomize all of these variables. Let's start with NOI. I'm going to delete this. And with the NOI, we're pretty certain that the beginning NOI value is going to be 500,000. But we can also see situations where it could be 50,000 less than that value or 50,000 more than that value. So we just need to come up with an equation that randomizes this variable plus or minus 50,000. And this is pretty easy. We can first start by putting in our lowest value. So that would be 50,000 less than 500K, which is 450,000. So let me put the equals here to make this an equation. And then we need to randomize it to be between this 450 and 550,000. So we can do 450,000 plus, and then in here, we know our difference between 550,000 and 450,000 is 100,000. So we can put plus 100,000. And then after this, we need to figure out the way we randomize it. Well, in Excel, there is this RAND formula. So all you need to do is multiply that 100,000 by the RAND, put the parentheses, and then close this and hit enter. And now anytime you calculate, it will give you a value between 450,000 and 550,000. Because each time you calculate, this RAND is coming up with a different number. And the RAND formula is coming up with a number between 0 and 1 every time. So if it gave a RAND value of 0, it would be 450,000 plus 100,000 multiplied by 0, which is just 0. So it would be the lower bound. If it came up with a value of 1, then it would be 450,000 plus 100,000 multiplied by 1 which gives you your upper bound value of 550,000. So it's always just randomizing a number between zero and one, and then we're getting an NOI based on that. So we can do the same thing for NOI growth. Say we're pretty confident that it's going to be 3% NOI growth, but we can really see anything between 2.5% and 3.5%. So again, we'll start with our lowest value. We'll say equals 2.5%, and then we'll do plus in our parentheses again. We know the difference between 3.5% and 2.5% is 1%, so we're taking our 1% and multiplying it by rand. And once we do this, now we are going to get a value between 2.5% and 3.5%. 
You'll notice that the NOI changed too. That's because anytime you make a change in this worksheet, anytime you calculate anything, it's going to give you a new random number. So even if you make a change to your Excel sheet that's not involving a cell that has rand in it, it's still going to recalculate that cell. Now we've calculated both of these the simple way where it's always going to give you an equal chance at values between the lower and upper bounds. But now let's say we want to look at more of a, a normal distribution for this. So for our debt interest rate, we think it's going to be 6%, but we think it's going to be a normal distribution where the standard deviation is 0.25%. And there is an easy way for us to do this. You do equals and then norm.inv. So when you do this function and do the parentheses, you'll see that you have options to enter in the probability, the mean, and the standard deviation. Well, our probability is going to be the rand. So this is going to give us a probability between zero and one. As a percentage, it's 0% to 100%. So we'll do that, we'll do comma, and our mean, we said we believe that it's going to be 6%. So we enter that in, and then our standard deviation, we think it's going to be a standard deviation of 0.25%. So once we do this, we can close it, and now it will be calculating our debt interest rate as a normal distribution, and it is determined based on the mean and standard deviation that we have set. We can do the same thing for the cap rate. If we do the norm.inv, we can again set the probability to the random, set a mean, this time we believe the cap rate is going to be 5%, and let's say again we think the standard deviation is going to be 0.25%. We can enter that, and then again, it calculates the same as the debt interest rate. The cap rate is going to be a normal distribution using the mean and the standard deviation that we set. So we're at a point where we have sensitized all of our variables. So if we go back to this deal sheet, we've linked this up so it's always calculating based on the newest calculations. So if we go to formula and keep hitting this calculate now button, it's always going to be calculating the new cash flows and IRRs and equity multiples based on the randomness that we set for all of our variables. So you can always look at it this way, but say you really wanna know the range of IRRs that you can expect based on the randomness that you set for all of your variables. The best way to do this is to run a simulation of say a thousand different examples where you can clearly see the range of IRRs. And the way you can do this is by using the data tables. So let's go back to our simulation. Up here you can see that I set the scenarios where this goes all the way down to a thousand different examples. And we're going to be looking for the IRR. So to do the data table, first we need to link to what we want to show. And with the IRR, we just need to go back to our previous sheet, click the IRR cell and hit enter. To create the data table, we need to highlight all of the cells that are going to be involved. So we start off with the cell to the left of the variable that we specify, include the variable, and then just go all the way down for the 1,000 examples we want to include. To do a data table, up at the top here, you go to Data, then over to What If Analysis, and then you have Data Table as your third option here. So you click on that. And for all of these rows, you want to find the column to the right, right? So all we need to do is go into the column input cell. And remember what I said about the random function. Any change you make to your worksheet, even if it's not specifically linked to the cell that has the randomness in it, it's going to update the random value. So all we need to do is just link to a cell that has nothing to do with the model. So you just link to a blank cell and hit OK. And what it's doing is it's recalculating every time for all of these examples and spitting out a new IRR. So each time the data table is updating this empty cell, and because that empty cell was updated, all of these values were recalculated. So the IRR changed and it was input for all of these. So you can see we have a pretty big range here of IRRs, and we can do really whatever analysis we want to do on this. So over to the right here, I have the mean standard deviation, the low and the high. So for the mean, we can find the mean value by just using the average and highlighting all of these values. So you go up here and we can see the mean is 21.99%. Now let's say I wanna find the standard deviation of the entire population. I can just use the stdv.p 
and then highlight all of this, hit enter, and now we have the standard deviation. We can also find the low by using the min. So we do min, again, highlight everything, close it, hit enter, and our minimum value is 11.95%. Do the high, we can just use max, once again, highlight everything, hit enter, and now we have our mean, standard deviation, our low, and our high. And I'm sure you can see that these change from the original values because again, anytime you do this, it's updating everything in the data table. So we have all of this information and that's great. But what's the main problem here? Well, the main problem is we have all of these IRRs, but we have no idea what's happening to these variables to cause the IRRs to be this way. So we can see we have a low of 12.56%. That might not be at all okay for our investors, but we have no idea what it is with these variables that's making it this low. We can see that we have a high of 30.91%. That would be great, but we again have no idea what we would need to achieve to get this IRR. A great workaround for this is to use a macro. And I know for a lot of people just the thought of using VBA is frightening, but you can use a very easy macro in order to find the information you need. So let's go over to the macro deal sheet. It's the same thing where we have all of these values that are linking to the random variables in the macro simulation. I believe all of these are exactly the same as what I did for the previous one. So these should all be pretty similar. And then over here we have the simulation. So these were previously calculated ones. I'm gonna delete these. But you can see here, we're not just simulating the IRR, right? When we're finding the IRR, we're also finding the equity multiple cash flow, and then all of the variables that were sensitized to cause the returns to be this way. So all of these are just linked up to the deal sheet. And what I did was I created a macro that essentially just keeps recalculating, taking these values and copying them down to all of these 1000 examples. So. It's just essentially a loop that says, run this a thousand times of recalculating the worksheet and then plop these values down into this data table. So once I have all of these values linked up, I can hit generate here. And after a while, it will spit out all of these a thousand simulations based on what I have up here. And this is perfect because now we can see a lower IRR and see exactly what the issue is. You can see, well, the NOI started pretty much near the bottom of what we anticipated, lower NOI growth, interest rate pretty similar to what we had, and actually a favorable cap rate. So we can see even with a favorable cap rate, we had a lower IRR here. So the starting NOI must be a very important part of these returns. And you can do the same analysis we did here where you find the mean, standard deviation, low and high, but you can even do more stuff here. Now you can pretty much copy all of this information into a new sheet, filter everything, and do some more intensive analysis of why the returns are the way they are. And let me quickly show you how to go about making the macro. I'm not going to deep dive into VBA. You don't want to learn that. I'm not the guy to teach you that. But the first thing you need to do is make sure you have the developer tab up here. So right click on anything up here and you can go to the customize the ribbon. And then if you see over here, if you're not familiar with VBA, you probably don't have the check mark by this. I don't think it comes with this by default. So all you need to do is hit the check mark on this and hit okay and you'll have the developer tab. Now, once you're in the developer tab, click on this visual basic button, and this is where you would enter in your code. So what I did here was I right clicked on the project and I said, insert module. And that's how you insert the module to input your code. So I already had this one created, and this is where you enter in the code. I'm not going to get into all of this, but essentially what it's saying here is this is a do until loop. So I'm saying there's a thousand rows here, the worksheet will calculate, and then it will copy all of these values down. So it's going to do this until all 1000 rows have been copied down. And once it's completed, you will have your information here. So that's how you do this with VBA. I would encourage you to check this out. If you just wanna use my spreadsheet and repurpose this, again, it is on the website in the link in the description. But the important thing to specify is, like all models, a Monte Carlo simulation is only as good as the assumptions you provide. 
you can just as easily manipulate a Monte Carlo model to make return probabilities look good as you can with a regular model. In fact, it's easier with a Monte Carlo model because there are often more assumptions and you can make them pretty confusing. But that's all I've got for you now. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments, and thank you for watching.